Python RPEs allow us to control the intensity. They allow us to control the weight on the bar. The next tool that I'm going to teach you about is something I call fatigue percent. And this is what's going to allow us control over the volume. It still hinges on RPE, and we're still going to kind of build on that concept. So some traditional volume measurements. Uh, you can count the total number of sets, the total number of lifts. Uh, number of lifts would be uh, such as if you did five sets of five, uh, that's 25 total repetitions, so 25 lifts. Uh, the, there's the total tonnage, then you can normalize tonnage dependent, uh, based on percentage of one rep max and so on. And there's others as well. You can look at time and retention and, and everything. All of these have some shortcomings. If you're going to control the volume of a workout based on these, they have some shortcomings. Usually what, what you see is people control volume based on number of sets. If they want to do more volume, then they do more sets. If they want to do less volume, they do fewer sets. And that's fine. That's fine. But if you come into a workout with a fixed number of sets planned, then uh, that aspect of your workout is not auto-regulated. And there are instances when that's fine, but then there are also instances where uh, you may be better off uh, choosing an auto-regulated tool. So let's get a little bit more in depth into this concept of volume. If you're if you're talking about developing strength, if you're working with a strength athlete or just developing strength in general, volume's not really your central concern. You're not interested in doing volume for volume's sake. Strength is the central concern. Okay? That means the majority of your training effect is going to be determined by the intensity. The majority of your training effect is going to be determined by the weight on the bar. If you train heavier, then you get one set of effects. If you train lighter, you get a different set of training effects. That means that the volume primarily determines the magnitude of the training effect. Now you can think of it like a compass, all right? The, the intensity determines the direction, okay? The volume determines how fast you go in that direction. All right. So if you put a weight on the bar that develops strength and you do a small volume, then you'll get a small effect. If you do uh, use the same weight and do a big volume, you get a bigger effect. So the natural question then is to ask, why wouldn't we just train, uh, just maximize our training volume? You know, we want big strength effects and we want them now. So let's do a boatload of volume and uh, use heavy weights. Well, we know that that doesn't work. That beats us up, and eventually people start feeling like crap, and when they feel like crap for long enough, they quit or they get hurt or something, something not good happens. So the question then is we have to manage that volume, okay? You still need to put the right amount of weight on the bar, and that's what the reps and RPE pairings are about. But we need to manage the volume so that they're progressing as fast as they can, but not getting too beat up, right? So why not just skip uh, the, the volume overall? Skip any concerns about volume. Just train to the appropriate level of stress. Train to the amount of stress that you can handle, and then move forward. Um, that's what fatigue percents try to accomplish. And I find that it's best to teach fatigue percents by using an example. And here's the example that I have. Let's say that I send you to the gym and I tell you, this is all you know. You're going to squat for five repetitions at a nine RPE. And then you're going to do 5% fatigue. Okay? So you don't even need to pay attention to the 5% fatigue piece for right now. It's just five repetitions at a nine RPE. So you go to the gym and you do your general warm-up and you, you start to squat, maybe you start with the bar, maybe not, uh, and you start to gradually add weight. You get through your basic warm-up sets and as the bar gets a little heavier, you do 90 uh, and you do five repetitions and let's say that's a seven RPE. Okay, that's fine, but we're not we're not up to a nine yet, so you increase the weight. Now you have 95 on the bar, and you do five more repetitions. Now it's an 8 RPE. Well, that's good. You're getting closer, but you're still not there yet, so you increase the weight some more. And now you do 100. 
for five repetitions, and that's a nine RPE. This is your top set. That means that this is the heaviest set that you'll do on this day. And the reason is because you did five repetitions at a nine RPE, and we said in the beginning that that was the goal, to do five repetitions at a nine RPE. So to kind of go back to what I was saying earlier about RPE, if you were having a really awesome day, uh, maybe better than you expected, it may, it may have taken 105 to produce this. Uh, likewise, if you were having a really terrible day, maybe you didn't get any sleep or whatnot, it may have only taken 95 or 90 to produce five repetitions out of nine. So anyway, back to this example. You get up to 100 repetitions for five repetitions. Sorry, you get up to 100 for five repetitions at a nine RPE. This is your top set. Now we want to know how much volume you should do. So we assess the fatigue. We said today's fatigue percent is 5%. So we're going to drop 5% of the weight off the bar. So you drop back down to 95. And you continue doing sets of five until you get back to a nine RPE. Now, you'll see that I do, uh, uh, in this example, there's 95 for 5, and that's an 8 RPE. Well, that's fine, but we're not there yet. We're not, we haven't achieved enough fatigue. So we continue to do another set, 95 again for 5 repetitions. This time you're getting more tired. This time it's a 9 RPE, and so then you stop. And you stop because five, uh, you did 5 repetitions at a 9 RPE. So it took 5% less weight to produce the same rep and RPE pairing. You had 5% fatigue. Now, again, on a, if you have a good day, a day where you're, you're volume tolerant, then it may take more sets. It may take one, two additional sets, maybe more, uh, to produce this, uh, this level of fatigue, this five repetitions at a nine RPE. And likewise, if you're having a really bad day, or if your work capacity is not good, then you may fatigue on the very first set. So it's, it's something that's the volume is going to auto-regulate up and down depending on your capabilities that day.